Hello. For today's topic, I'm going back to something I've seen a long time ago, and I can't even remember or find the original reference. But this was a forum post somewhere asking how to avoid taking trades too frequently. Uh, the actual question was, once the expert advisor takes a trade, and I have no idea what the logic was in this expert advisor, but how to avoid taking another trade too soon after that, or introduce a delay before the next trade happens. That question was answered in the forum, but I don't think the answers were the most appropriate for that particular question. So what I'm going to do today is show you a quick expert advisor that I'll use as the example for this. And this expert advisor is by no means a tradable expert advisor. In fact, you'll see there are entire gaps in the code, but it does demonstrate the kind of problem that you might be facing. And then I'll explain the answer that was proposed and I'll show you my two alternate answers to that question. So this is more of a beginner level video. So if you're just looking at coding techniques, then this is probably the appropriate level video for you. Now to demonstrate this, I've set up a standard expert advisor. This is a moving average cross. I use this quite a lot in demonstrations. It's not by any means a full expert advisor. I've only put in enough here to demonstrate what I'm talking about. And I've written this for both MetaTrader 4 and MetaTrader 5. I've got both on screen. I've got MetaTrader 5 on the left and MetaTrader 4 on the right. And I've done my best to line them up so that you can see where the differences are. Um, in the beginning, they all have property statements, including property strict. Now this is not needed for MetaTrader 5. It's just ignored. So there's no harm having it there. I'm using it in MetaTrader 4. This was introduced because MetaTrader 4 has been around for longer and the language actually had a syntax change some time ago. And to maintain compatibility with earlier code written for MetaTrader 4, this property strict was introduced. So using that makes MetaTrader 4 use the new language syntax, which is actually the same syntax as MetaTrader 5. So these two are the same. And then I have inputs and they're the same for both MetaTrader 4 and 5. All I'm doing is requesting a fast moving average period and a slow period. Normally I would also include the moving average type and the applied price, but because this is just a demonstration, I'm ignoring those. I'm just going to be treating these as simple moving averages on the close price, but I am allowing the input of the two moving average periods. And then the standard inputs of the lot size, which will be for each trade, a magic number and a trade comment. Now you can see a gap here in MetaTrader 4. That's because I have some extra statements needed for MetaTrader 5. MetaTrader 5 handles indicators differently. It associates a handle to that object. So I have a fast handle, which will be associated with the fast moving average and a slow handle for the slow moving average. MetaTrader 4 works differently. You actually make a call to the function for that indicator each time you want a value where MetaTrader 5 sets it up once. So I need these handles for MetaTrader 5, but not MetaTrader 4. Also in MetaTrader 5, there is this trade slash trade.mqh file included in the includes folder. Uh, and that makes it easier to perform trading operations on MetaTrader 5. So I include that and that allows me to make the trades more easily without a lot of the complications required because a lot of that work is handled inside this trade.mqh file. Now trade.mqh actually declares a class called ctrade, this ctrade. And so I need an object of type ctrade to be able to perform trading operations and that's what I'm declaring here, a variable of type C trade, and I'm just calling that variable trade. The trade.mqh file includes some other files, and that also gives access to a class called C position info. Uh, and so I've included that here, C position info, and I've declared a variable called position info for that. Next, down to the on init, let me just scroll these up and get them lined up. You can see MetaTrader 4 is a little bit empty. All I have is the return init succeeded because there's nothing to do in the init for this particular expert advisor on MetaTrader 4. In MetaTrader 5, here's that trade variable that I set up. When I make a call to that to place a trade, there is no option to set the magic number for the trade, but there is an option to set expert magic number on the object. And I just call that at the beginning here so I don't need to worry about it again. So this trade.set expert magic number, and that's the input for magic number. That will assign a magic number then to every trade that I place through this trade object. And then I mentioned the handles, the fast and slow handles. So here are the calls to those. 
It's a call to the IMA function, the moving average function, and I'm passing the arguments symbol, period, fast period. I may scroll this across a little. Shift, which I don't use, so I've set that as zero. Uh, simple moving average and price close. So those are the standard arguments for a moving average. And I make a call and that returns this fast handle. And I do the same then for IMA, but this time using the input slow period and that gives me the slow handle. Now, if I were writing this as a real expert advisor, I would have to also test that these come back as not invalid handle to make sure they've worked. I'm just using this for an example, so I'm not worrying about that. But that's setting up the two handles to get moving average values back later in MetaTrader 5. Then on dnit, again, MetaTrader 5 is different because I've set up these two handles and to release the memory that they are using when I finish running this expert advisor, I call indicator release passing in each of the handles, indicator release, fast handle and slow handle. And that just releases the memory so I don't gradually chew up all of the memory available on the computer. Let me scroll down now to the on tick, which is where generally all of the work happens. I need to get values for the fast and slow moving average for two different bars to see if I've had a cross. Now in MetaTrader 5, I get that data differently because as I said, the indicators are handled differently. I declare a buffer of type double, and that's just an array. I call array set as series because when I get the values back into this buffer, I want buffer element zero to match bar number zero and buffer element one to match bar number one. So calling array set as series will set the direction of that array. And then copy buffer statement copies values from that indicator handle. In this case, I'm using the fast handle. Then the buffer number, now this is a moving average, so there is only one buffer, so that's buffer number zero. The start position, I'm starting at bar number zero and the number of values to return, I'm returning three values. So that will give me the fast moving average values for bars number zero, one, and two and all of those are copied into this array buff. And then I just want to grab those values. So fast one is buff zero, which is the current moving average on the currently open bar. Fast two is the moving average then on bar number one. Now I'll mention quickly, normally I would write an expert advisor like this and only trade when there's a new bar and I would be looking at bars number one and two. But for the purpose of this example, I'm looking at bar number zero and one. So I'm looking at the fast moving average changing constantly on every tick on bar number zero, where if I looked at bars one and two, it would only change once per bar. With all of that, I then do the same thing. Copy buffer, the slow handle, buffer number zero, because there is only one buffer for a moving average, beginning at zero for three values and store those in buff. I've already used buff. I'm just reusing that variable because I don't need the values from the earlier call. And then I do the same for storing that into slow one and slow two from buffer number zero and buffer number one. So at the end of this, I've got the fast moving average values for bar zero, which is fast one, and for bar one, which is fast two, and then the same for the slow moving average. Just go across to the MetaTrader 4 version of this, and here I have to make a call to the IMA function for each value that I want to get in MetaTrader 4. So fast one is a call to IMA, and this is a very similar call to the one we saw for MetaTrader 5. I pass the symbol, the current chart time frame, which is period bracket bracket, the number of periods I'm looking at for the moving average calculation, shift, which I'm setting to zero, the mode, and I'm using simple moving average here, mode underscore SMA, the applied price that I'm using, which is price underscore close, and then the bar number that I want, and I want bar number zero. So that's the only difference in this call from the MetaTrader 5 version. But where MetaTrader 5 returns a handle to an indicator, this simply returns the value, and I get the value back then for bar number zero. And then I repeat that for bar number one, which gives me this fast two, and then I repeat it again for the slow period four bars number zero and one, and it gives me this slow one and slow two. Now these two lines are the same, update trailing stop and close on condition. This is only an example expert advisor and there's actually nothing in these two functions, but I'm saying that this particular expert will run a trailing stop. So I'll make a call to a function here to update that. 
and based on some condition that I haven't bothered to write, then it will also want to close trades. And then we get down to the logic where I'm actually testing the crossover of the moving averages in order to open trades. So if fast moving average one is greater than slow one and fast two is not, so using inverse logic here, if not fast two is greater than slow two, then that means I've had a cross in the upward direction. So the fast moving average has moved above the slow. Let me line that up for you there, uh, because this is actually the same between both MetaTrader 4 and 5. So if fast moving average has crossed above slow, then I trade open order type buy. Exactly the same here in MetaTrader 4. The opposite condition, if fast one is less than slow one and not fast two is less than slow two, in other words, fast two is greater than or equal to slow two, then trade open order type sell. So this is my open condition. If the fast moving average crosses above the slow moving average, I'm buying. If the fast moving average crosses below the slow moving average, then I'm selling. Let me scroll up and align these again. The logic here is slightly different between MetaTrader 4 and 5. First, I'm getting the current market price, and that depends on whether the type, this order type passed in, is a buy or a sell. So using the ternary operator, this question mark, if type is equal to order type buy, let me scroll across, then the price I want is from symbol info double, passing in the chart symbol, and I want the ask price. And if that's not true, then I must be selling, so I'm asking for symbol info double, symbol, and symbol underscore bid. So that gives me the open price for a trade, depending whether it's buy or sell. And I have exactly the same code here for MetaTrader 4, there's no difference at all. Then there is a difference to opening the trade. Begin with MetaTrader 4, I simply send order send is the function for opening a trade in MetaTrader 4. The arguments to that are the chart symbol, the type, which has been passed in here, it's either an order type buy or sell, lot size from the inputs, the price that I've just calculated, slippage, stop loss and take profit I'm setting for zero for this example, and then the trade comment and the magic number. Now that will return a ticket number if the order has been successful or if it has been unsuccessful it will return zero. So I have this greater than zero. Let me expand it so you can see the whole thing on the chart on screen at one time. Result equals order send is greater than zero. So if order send fails I'll get a ticket number of zero which means result will be false because it's not greater than zero. If I get a ticket number that's greater than zero, then result is true. So this is just telling me whether I successfully placed that trade. And now back to the MetaTrader 5 version, still bool result, so I'm still capturing the result, but here I'm using that trade variable and a function called dot position open, which takes very similar arguments. The symbol, the type, order type buy or sell, the lot size, the price, take profit, the stop loss, scroll a little further and the trade comment note there's no magic number here and as I said I've set that once for the object so this trade object will take care of placing that order and returns a boolean if it's been successful so result will tell me if I've successfully placed this trade and then in both cases I just return that result now I'm not doing anything with the result that I'm returning but I've set this up as a boolean to return that result and that's all for trade open in both cases. And then the two functions that I said were empty, close, con close on condition and update trailing stop. I have no trailing stop, so whatever logic you might have for a trailing stop here and close on condition could be almost any close condition. I just want to use these to demonstrate that it's possible to close and update trailing stop at different times to opening the trade. So when the original question was posted, it was how to prevent the expert advisor from placing another trade too soon after a trade's been placed. So just looking at this, I'll expand this to full screen. On MetaTrader 5 here, I've got fast and slow and the fast buffer is buffer number zero. So that's the current bar number moving average. And as you can imagine, as price changes, that number is going to go up and down quite rapidly as the price changes from tick to tick. 
and it's entirely possible that during a single bar that price will cross the slow moving average, come back again, cross again and back. It could do that many times. So just with this logic, and this is the reason why I'm trading on bar number zero, it's possible to have this condition triggered many times where the fast moving average has moved above the slow moving average. In fact, there's a, an error in this code where simply once this fast moving average is greater than the slow moving average, it will just keep trading. Um, but as I said, this is just an example. So the question was how to prevent this from continually trading after a trade's been opened. And the answers that were given in the forum rotated largely around using sleep. Now, sleep as a function is fine, but it will hold up the entire expert advisor. And the reason that I don't propose using sleep because I have this update trailing stop and close on condition. And if after trade open, I called sleep, um, and when I show the examples, I'm going to be waiting for maybe four hours before I place another trade. If I simply called sleep for four hours, then the update trailing stop and the close on condition are not going to be activated for four more hours. So I won't be updating trailing stop or any close. And this expert advisor may have a portfolio of trades open, not just this one that's just been placed. And it means I'm not doing anything with any of those other trades if I use the sleep. So that's why I don't propose using the sleep. What I'm going to show instead is logic that will allow me to simply prevent placing another trade within a time window. And I'm going to do that in two different ways. Uh, in one way, I'm going to specify a number of minutes where I will not place a new trade within that number of minutes. And the second, I'm going to specify a number of bars where I won't place a trade within that number of bars. Now, first I'm going to look at how to prevent a trade happening within a given number of minutes after an earlier trade. On the right, I have the original MA Cross Expert Advisor, and on the left, I have the modified version with the delay minutes. So all of the code is the same down to here at line number 11, and the changes I'm going to be making are the same for MetaTrader 4. So I'm only going to show this for MetaTrader 5, but these lines of code are the same in MetaTrader 4 and 5. First thing I've done is add an input here, input delay minutes, and I'm setting that to 244 hours. That's the delay between trades, and I won't be able to place a second trade until at least 240 minutes after a trade has been placed. I'm adding a global variable here, next trade time, and I'm setting that to zero to begin with. So zero is the original starting point of time, and therefore I know that my current time is after that. So effectively setting this to zero means I haven't got any delay to wait now. Scroll that down and line up. The on init section doesn't change, no changes here. On D init, there are no changes here. And that's the same for MetaTrader 4 and 5. On tick, also no changes here for MetaTrader 4 or 5. This code is exactly the same. All of the changes happen in the trade open function. So I've introduced this line in the delay minutes version. If time current is less than next trade time, then I simply return false. So I'm saying I wasn't able to place a trade and that is because I'm still waiting until this next trade time has passed. And after that, I'm able to place a new trade. That's the one line that blocks me creating a new trade too soon after an earlier trade has been placed. These lines are the same down to placing the trade. But then I've also added here, if result, so if I've successfully placed a trade, then I reset this next trade time variable to be time current plus delay in minutes multiplied by 60. So time is actually measured in seconds. So my delay in minutes multiplied by 60 gives me the delay in seconds. And I add that to the current time. And this way I will not trade again before time delay minutes multiplied by 60 seconds from now. And that will simply fail at this point each time and return false. And the point of returning false here is that if I wanted to in my code above, I could test to see if the trade open has been successful or not and take some kind of action. And if I really wanted to, I can also set values in here in global variables to say why this failed. And then this return result is the same and all the rest of the code is the same. So just with those few lines, I have blocked trading within a specified time after a trade has been placed. Now the one warning I would have here, 
this delay minutes is also going to continue to count over a weekend. Now, for most symbols, uh, weekend trading doesn't happen. So you get to the end of Friday and trade is suspended until Monday morning. So just be aware that if you're looking at this as being actual time on the chart and it spans a weekend, then the delay is probably going to expire during the weekend and you'll begin trading again first thing on Monday morning. But apart from that one caution, this simply prevents me placing new trades. But the code here in the on tick will continue to cycle around, continue to update any trailing stops I may have, close any trades that I have on their closing condition. It simply won't open new trades. So I think this is a better response to the question of how to prevent creating new trades too soon after, because this allows all of the rest of the logic in the expert advisor to continue. And it does exactly what was asked prevents new trades being placed. So now the next example is where you might want to specify that delay based on number of bars that have passed. And that has a slightly different aspect. So now I'm looking at the situation of delaying by number of bars. I've again got the original moving average cross expert advisor for MetaTrader 5 on the right and the modified version with the delay based on number of bars on the left. And this code again is the same change between MetaTrader 4 and MetaTrader 5. My input though now is input delay bars. So that's just how many bars you want to delay. And when I'm counting this, a delay of one bar will mean that I can trade from the beginning of the bar after the bar where a trade has been placed. So that's one. So it's simply counting the number of bars that have opened after the bar where the trade was placed. Uh, it doesn't take any account of partial bars. So if I traded close to the end of one bar and had a delay of one, I could still trade immediately when that bar closes and a new bar opens. Here, I've replaced my date time variable. It's still a date time, but now it is the last trade time. As in, this will be the time that I placed the most recent trade. I'm still setting it to zero, but that will store the time of the most recent trade, not the next time that I'm allowed to trade. And you might be thinking, why can't I simply multiply the number of bars by the number of seconds in a bar? And that is because there are certain times where trading doesn't happen. And again, weekends. So at weekends, there are no bars. If I wanted to delay by four bars and I happen to trade in the last bar on a Friday, then I don't want to trade until three bars into Monday morning. I don't want to start trading sometime on Saturday or I don't want my time limit to expire sometime on Saturday. So this delay by bars actually does take account of weekends and non-trading times. And that's why I have to have slightly different logic. There's still no change then until I get to trade open. I have another line here where I'm exiting. And this simply says if I bar shift symbol from the chart, period from the chart, last trade time, comma, false. Now that I bar shift function will give me the bar number that contains this last trade time. Now I've initialized it to zero, so that will give me a very high bar number. This false means that I don't have to find an exact match because if I'm beyond the history of my bars, then I don't want to have to look for a specific bar. So this will give me the number of the bar that contains this time. And let me make this full screen so we can see it all. If I bar shift then, so if the number of bars that I'm looking back is less than the number of bars that I'm delaying by. Now, if I happen to still be in the bar where this happened, then I bar shift is going to return zero because I'm in bar number zero. And if that is less than my delay bars, which could be one or two, then I'll simply return false. As soon as I open a new bar, last trade time is going to find with I bar shift, it's going to become bar number one. So if my delay bars is one, then this is no longer true. I bar shift is not less than one, and therefore I will fall through here. So this will allow me to trade as soon as a new bar opens. And if I want to delay by more than that, I simply increase delay bars. This code for placing the trade is still exactly the same as it was for the version without any delays. And here, if result, so if I'm successfully placing a trade, then all I do is set last trade time to time current. Uh, with the delay by minutes, I set next trade time to time current plus delay. 
In this case, I'm just capturing when was the last trade time as time current. And that's all I need now to implement a delay based on number of bars that have changed or number of new bars that have opened, if you prefer, since the time this trade was placed. And just as before, this will allow the expert to continue on through the on tick. It will execute the update trailing stop, the close on condition, anything else I may have in here. The only thing that won't happen is opening new trades because I've got this condition in here to block that. So I think those two are better options than implementing a sleep, uh, although I know nothing about the expert advisor that was the subject of the original question, and perhaps sleep was the best option there because it's simple. But this would have achieved the same result and would have allowed any other logic like this to continue working. All of this code is available on GitHub. This is my suggested response to the question. And as I said, this is more of a beginner level coding than some of the other work that I've been doing recently. I will be trying to mix the beginner type coding in with my other videos throughout this year. If this video has been useful to you, then please click the like button. And if you want to see more of our videos, click subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when we release new videos. Thank you for watching.